Hello, welcome to another Universities UK Innovation and Growth webcast. My name is Greg Wade, I'm the leader on innovation growth in Universities UK and I'm joined by Keith. Keith, do you want to say hello, introduce yourself? Hello there, uh, I'm Keith Burnley, I'm CEO of the National Centre for Entrepreneurship in Education. Um, and the topic of this uh, webcast is the Lord Young Report on Enterprise for All and Enterprise Education. Um, so we'll go through that report and discuss some of the recommendations and their impact on the higher education sector. Um, but before that, Keith, um, you've, you've got a lot of experience in this area in higher education. Do you just want to outline sort of how much you've been involved in this in the past and where your experience comes from? Yes, for, for the past, past two or three years I've been involved with the um, National Centre for Entrepreneurship in Education, uh, NCEE, um, and started working there actually on a graduate startup project and mm -hmm. then took over as right. CEO. So um, uh, the Lord Young report is, is quite an important uh, thread running through most of what we, we do. Mm -hmm. uh, but before that I was uh, Executive Director of the North West Universities Association mm -hmm. uh, and worked at the interface between uh, universities and, and their stakeholders, um, particularly government, particularly business, um, mm -hmm. and of course the, uh, the enterprise agenda was, was very important there too. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, we'll be look, looking forward to hearing what you have to say in your reflections on some of the recommendations. Um, one thing I would say is, is, this is probably showing my age, but when I went to university in the late 80s, I was involved in, in the then Student Enterprise Programme, uh, which was a national programme introduced by the then government. Um, so these issues have been around for quite a long time and I'm, I'm pleased the report builds on and recognises some of the foundations and existing activities in universities. Is that your view? Yes, and I think it's quite important to build on what's already there. And, mm -hmm. and I think to recognise that, that sometimes things have been around perhaps under different labels as well. Yeah. So um, I think it'd be a hard place to actually define what enterprise is and how that differs from entrepreneurship and, and how, yeah. uh, to some extent, that di differs from innovation. These things yeah. are all, all linked. Um, so and they've probably, the definitions have probably changed over time. Indeed, indeed. Okay. Um, and often changed in accordance with, uh, with funding streams. Indeed. Well, without further ado, um, let's go into the, the, the detailed recommendations in the report. Uh, and the first one is for an enterprise E-Star award. Yeah, this is, a, this is quite an interesting development. The, the National Business Awards have taken mm -hmm. on um, and, and it, it is, you know, replaces one of their existing awards. So right. it's, okay. it's not as if they've just added to their portfolio. Yeah. They've taken on uh, the entrepreneurial or ed, the university enterprise as yeah. uh, something that they will award um, the Enterprise E-Star Award for. Um, I think that you know, it's, a, it's prestigious, the Duke of mm -hmm. York's uh, involved, uh, and it's something that, that universities will be interested in. Yeah. Um, I guess the issue always is that universities do have to consider the amount of time they spend uh, applying for different awards, and I'm, yes. you know, I'm not sure how, uh, how the aim of everybody applying will be, will be achieved. I think it's more likely to be 20 or 30 people applying. Yeah. Because there was, in the report, there was a, a sort of expectation that it could be used as some sort of indicator, national indicator, which assumes that, that quite a high proportion of universities yeah. would be applying every year. Do you yeah, think? yeah, I think, it, it, I think yeah. there is that sort of assumption, and I, and I can understand why that, mm -hmm. that is attractive, um, but I think in practical terms, that's going to be quite a challenge. Yeah, I agree. Um, the Times Higher already runs an Entrepreneurial University Award. Um, do you think there'll be potential overlap? Or? Um, I, I don't think so. I mean, we actually sponsor that, that award, oh, okay. the yeah. Entrepreneurial University of, of the Year. And I think it, it's quite going to be quite different. I mean, we are looking at the overall uh, aspect of, of entrepreneurialism in the university, yeah. uh, how, it, uh, how, it, how it acts with all of its stakeholders mm -hmm. uh, in an entrepreneurial way. Um, the uh, University Enterprise Award is specifically going to be about mm. enterprise within the, the university. Okay, okay, that's helpful. I mean, it, on balance, hope if they don't compete with each other or duplicate each other, 
um, having another ward that raises the profile of university activity in this area would be quite good. Yes, I mean, I think every, I mean, universities are doing an awful lot and it's, it's good to, to get showcases for that activity. Yeah. Okay, the next one was, um, the next recommendation was enterprise modules for all students. Yes, yes, I mean, I think that um, this is, an inter again, an interesting, um, interesting issue. Uh, a number of universities now are, uh, maybe have been for some time, uh, providing electives yeah. in, uh, in, in enterprise, and that is quite a powerful tool for delivering enterprise education. However, we do have to recognise that there are other powerful tools as well. Yeah. Um, a lot of universities are involved in extracurricular, or mm -hmm. we perhaps now might call it co-curricular uh, yeah. activity that gives students the, the opportunity to, to uh, receive enterprise education, particularly in relation to, to startups. Mm -hmm. um, and a number of universities actually pride themselves on embedding mm -hmm. enterprise within the curriculum, which yeah. because it's, it's almost the opposite of, of an yeah. elective so that, that all students will receive uh, some, um, uh, will be impacted in, in some way in terms of enterprise education. Um, and I think that to a degree there's, there's room for all of these approaches yeah. and there is a need to, to understand that depending on, on the particular subject uh, then one approach may be uh, more relevant than another. Mm. For example, if you're, if you're in a, a, a degree where the curriculum is very crowded, yeah. uh, possibly as a result of a professional body accreditation. Yeah, engineering um, comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, or me medicine. In, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. So then uh, elective, sorry, may not be the, the answer. Mm. Um, and embedding may be a long-term aim, but difficult. So extracurricular yeah. activity may, may be the best, um, best solution. Yeah. So we want flexibility to fit in with institutional strategies, student needs and different subjects. A absolutely, that's, that's in, the, in a nutshell. Okay, brilliant, thank you. Um, the next one is, is uh, some comments were made about um, the number of enterprise societies and their roles. Yes, and I think that, um, again, this is an area where there's been significant growth. Um, NACU have played mm -hmm. a, a, a part in, in, in that, that growth and Clearly, the report recognises recognises that. I think that, um, and I think student enterprise societies will grow. Yeah. Uh, but I think that we also just need to to make sure that they are inclusive. Mm -hmm. um, the needs of, of of some students are very different from the needs of others, and the ability yeah. to to participate. I, I, I often sort of say, you know, is, is this something that that a, uh, a working class mum, single parent in mm. uh, in a council estate in in Leeds say? Yeah. Who's at, at one of the universities there could, could, could access, or are there better mm. ways of uh, of, uh, of involving uh, people in, in the enterprise agenda? Yeah. Um, so I, I guess we need to we need to check that that the provision there is is reaching everyone yeah. that it needs to do, or recognise that perhaps it, it's not, and other measures have to have to take place. Yeah, I think that's a very a very helpful challenge to sort of place in front of the, the enterprise societies um, and perhaps as a challenge on the sector to identify whether there are any enterprise societies that have done a particularly good job in that respect. I, I think that's right and I think that um, it's important here not to, to say that if someone isn't doing the, the, the job in terms of being fully inclusive then that doesn't mean they're doing a bad job, it no. just means the university needs to sit back and, and look yeah. at what opportunities there are provided for students of, of, of all kinds. Yeah. Well said. Um, there's a student business startup programme yes. that's been raised. Yes. Uh, this wishes to build on the, the work of the Small Business Charter mm -hmm. uh, and to involve... I think there are about... Is there 20 universities that have got I think that's charter? right. I think it's 20. Yes. Okay. Um, and bringing student enterprise societies as well yeah. and look to develop startup programmes mm -hmm. from the business schools involving student enterprise societies. Yeah. Um, I, I think the, the important point here again is to ensure that we build on what is already happening. Yeah. Uh, in some institutions the business school is already providing uh, student startup yeah. activity, uh, extracurricular or within the curriculum. Mm -hmm. 
Um, in others, the activity is happening, but not through the business school, because yeah. the if you're talking about embedding, then there is minutes throughout the yeah. uh, the university, and and some universities feel that uh, that there are better ways or more appropriate ways for their circumstances. Yeah. Um, and some institutions, uh, some very famous institutions like UCL, don't have a business school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we at UK have done an awful lot of work on European structural and investment funds yeah. um, and the emphasis on startups is quite a strong theme mm. in those funds. Yeah. Um, do you think there are potential links between this recommendation and, and those activities? In, in, indeed, and I, I think there's a very significant issue here. Uh, currently there are many projects funded by structural funds, yeah. uh, often with the match being identified from the Higher Education Innovation Fund. Yeah. Um, there are issues about, we don't know yet, but there are issues about whether HIFE will continue and if it will mm -hmm. continue to the same extent. Uh, and of course we're going through the implementation of the new European programme yeah. uh, and it, it's not clear if, if this sort of activity that has been going on will, will continue. I mean, there are, there are, you know, across the North and uh, Midlands there are, there are currently four projects involving, I think between them, 25 to 30 universities delivering yeah. startup activity funded by European Regional Development Fund. Yeah. Interestingly, I think there's there's opportunities in the future for this to be funded by European Social Fund as well as uh, Regional Development Fund because enterprise talent development is, mm. is an ESF-like activity, a skills activity. Yes. Yes, uh, particularly if it was targeted towards specific groups who might not have been benefited or been involved before. Which, which takes us back to the, the, the single mum in, in, in Council Estate in Leeds. Yeah. Um, and the, um, the the nature of ERDF is very much about providing starting up a business and, and yeah. jobs and, 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 and GDP. So uh, the two could work together quite in, in a very interesting way. Yeah. The, the challenge, of course, is that at the moment we've got programmes running across a number of let boundaries yes. in many cases yes. uh, and we need to see how these things can be secured in the new architecture of, uh, yeah. of management and, and, and policy in relation to the programme but, but you, you know more about that than, than I Greg I suspect at the moment. Well oh, yes, yes it's a, it's a significant challenge um, but we're working with uh, universities, LEPs, LEP network and biz on that. So yes, and, and and Hefke, of course. Yes, yes, and and we we at NCE we get approaches from institutions to be involved in some of those mm -hmm. developments as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next the next area of, of interest in the report was was social enterprise. Mm. Uh, I mean, this is an area where I think UK higher education can can rightfully say we're we're a European leader. I think that's right. Um, it, again, it's one of those interesting areas where if you're asked to define a social enterprise, you, you might get as many definitions as, as the people you ask. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, it's a concept that I think is broadly uh, understood and is, it has been very much supported by, by the sector uh, and by funders. Yeah. Uh, and so, yes, the UK, I think, can, can claim a, uh, a position uh, at, at the top of the table in, 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 in this respect. We do, again, you know, sorry to perhaps go on about this, but inclusivity is a important issue as well. And, yeah. and again, there's, a, there's, there's some, I think there's a, some review that we probably need to do in mm -hmm. relation to value for money and in relation yeah. to um, the reach uh, of, the, of the activities. Mm. Okay. Um, enterprise passport mm. is the next on my list. Yeah, an excellent idea. Um, mm. You know, the notion that um, we can track from nursery through to, to PhD the uh, experience that someone's had yeah. in relation to um, yeah. enterprise education is, uh, is a, a powerful notion. Mm. Um, the interest in, in Lodging's report, there's a, a number of examples of, uh, of activity given and, and quite yeah. a large number of examples. And yeah. I recognise quite a large number of things left out as well, yeah. and so you know there is a there's an issue of scale here and ex mm. the extent of the activity that's uh, that's 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 trying to be uh, captured. But but I think Greg, I mean you've been involved in the HE achievement report, and it seems to me there's some yeah. some links links there. Well, yes, I mean we we've sort of tried to in developing our education achievement report, try and give a, a broader representation of what the, the student has achieved. 
um, and including activities such as will yeah. be included in a yeah. in an enterprise passport. Yeah. Um, so I think reflecting on that challenge, I think I think the enterprise passport has has very significant potential to raise the profile of enterprise education, mm -hmm. to put it on the radar of individual students and employers and organisations. Yes. But I think I think there are some sort of big issues that that need to be sorted out before it looks like it, it, it could be implemented. I mean, the, the first one is ownership. Yeah. As in whether it's owned by yeah. the individual or owned by the institutions or organisations that they're passing through or by some central organisation. Yeah, I think there's an interesting issue as well in that it, it, education at, at school level, at college level, yeah. is more fragmented yeah. than, than it used to be. We, don't, we no longer have local education authorities yeah. um, Producing policies, etc., things are very much down to a school level, um, and in some ways, uh, higher education may actually be the most um, uh, integrated part yeah. of, of the picture at, at the moment. And you know, it seems to me there's a real challenge for universities taking students from all over the United Kingdom yeah. to ensure that there's a, some sort of common approach to enterprise passport from nursery through to further education. Yeah. I, I think it's an interesting idea. And maybe that it's an idea that sort of comes from, well, you know, people go to school, then they go to university. Um, yeah. But the reality is that the number of it's steps on that journey now is much more complex and getting yeah. more complex yeah. every day. Yeah. I mean, I think the, you know, one of the other challenges is, 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 is relates to validation or quality assurance, because if it's going to be something that, that students are going to put in front of employ employers, I think it needs to be clear whether to the employers whether it's been something that's formally yes. been signed off yes. by some organisation, yes. um, and that's certainly something that was was of keen interest to employers in relation to yeah. The here. Yeah, yeah, and I think that you then sort of begin to look at something that might be very bureaucratic if you're not careful, yeah. and very much dependent on quite significant IT systems and yes. And alignment of IT systems. Yeah, and the UK has not got a good history of, of aligning IT systems. No. Not cheaply, no. anyway. No. So, I mean, one thing we've suggested is, is to maybe think about different models of how you could label an enterprise passport and whether there might be ways in which you create a brand yeah. that can be sort of easily aligned with existing activities mm -hmm. rather than seeking to, mm -hmm. to have one output that's got one sort of system or support network yeah. behind it. Yeah. Um, but that was just a suggestion. Yes, I, I think that uh, I think there are a lot of uh, a lot of lot of bridges to be crossed. Yes, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, and the last thing uh, that was on my list is um, the future earnings and employment record. Yes, again, um, a very laudable aim to to enable uh, employers and students particularly students, to, to see where the benefit has, has, has been added in terms of, of um, institutions attended and, and, and income uh, being, uh, being obtained by, by, by graduates. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think again, um, I mean I, I just worry about confidentiality and data protection yeah. um, and I worry about this issue of connecting up systems that are designed for other things yeah um, so there's some huge hurdles there I, I think also there's a you know it's back to this journey issue again there's a there's a very complex journey for many students these days and if you're looking yeah. where's the value added um, you yeah. know where someone is when the records finally you know when they've ceased their education yeah. or does yeah. anybody cease their education anymore probably not but at, at a particular point but the journey there has been from nursery through to, 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 to school, maybe two or three schools. Yeah. We have a lot, of students, a lot of students changing at 14 now, college, university, first degree, second degree, mm -hmm. third degree, some kind. So there's a, there's, a, there's a real complex journey that I think that the, this is, again, it's going to be a challenge to, to identify value added. If you could, that would be a very, very powerful tool. Yeah. Well, we'll watch this space. Indeed. Um, I've run out of my list of things. I think those are all the recommendations. Yes. Was there anything else you wanted to No, I mean, the, the, they are recommendations, of course, from the Lodium. Yeah. Um, and we, we are expecting a government, government response. Yeah. Um, 
later in the year. Um, these things are dictated by other events, no doubt. Indeed. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Keith. Thank that you. Was, that was a quick and helpful run through of all the recommendations of the Lord Young Report. Um, as usual with all of our webcasts, uh, alongside the, the actual uh, video on YouTube, we'll include links to the Lord Young Report, to NCE, and to the Higher Education Achievement Report. If you've got any questions or any comments on anything that's come up, please do get in touch. So thank you, and thank you, Keith. Thank you.